You're watching VTV. At this rate, you'll destroy all the frogs in the entire county, my dear. I asked you before not to come down to my laboratory while I'm busy with my experiments. If these animals could speak, they'd have something to say about your tastes. This always happens when you permit yourself to overindulge in your brandy. You are trying to provoke me, but this is not the moment, dear. You're leaving for the Edinburgh Congress with a lot of fanatical good-for-nothings like yourself, I suppose. Don't you ever dare to speak to me like that, Muriel. <laughs> oh, Stephen, you mustn't mind if I care about your going away so frequently. After all, I'm your wife. And I'd like to spend the night with you. Oh, Solange. So you saw everything. You even enjoyed it, I presume, didn't you? I am too old for that sort of thing, Baroness. I only wanted to ask the doctor his orders regarding the luggage. It's so late. And it's a long journey. I'm coming now. It's time to go. Already? A storm is threatening this evening. I shall be worried about you. When will you be back? I intend to stay only a couple of days in Edinburgh. You know, I can't bear to be without you very long. Bon voyage, Stephen. Sleep well, Muriel. Yes, I'll go to bed straight away. I'll do my best to dream about you. Why is he so nervous? He's been left in the stable too long. The drive will do him good. Keep your eyes open, David. I entrust my wife's safety to you. <laughs> Those new plants that just arrived today, sir, shall I leave them outside? Put them in the greenhouse, but look after them. They need a lot of water. I'll see to it, sir. Have a good journey.
at last. I thought he would never go, that devil. Oh, poor Stephen. You know I don't like you to talk about him that way. Why? Do you still love him? You're just making a fool of me. <laughs> it's you I love. <laughs> I'm going to rid you of your vulgar ways and replace them with others much more subtle and refined. I don't understand you. It doesn't matter. Not yet. Solange's room is too near. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to the grocery. It's nicer must come to you only after I've torn from your bodies all the suffering and pain a human being can stand. And you don't know yet how long it takes to die of pain. Thank you. 
sip. Just, just a sip. Uh, uh, I'm dying, Stephen. You're a monster! You don't know the hate I have inside. If you could see it, you would be terrified. You would kill me at once. But even by killing me, you can't free yourself from my hatred, Stephen Aerosmith. You can kill my body, but I'll never leave you in peace. Never, never! I'm not afraid of the dead. Corpses are destined to rot and fertilize the earth. I can still hurt you while I'm alive, Stephen. You thought you would inherit everything if I died, didn't you? My castle, all my wealth, so that you could continue your dirty experiments. But you've made a tremendous mistake, you know, Stephen. Do you understand that? Because I made a new will. After I realized what a vile, perverted monster I married. I made a new will, in which I bequeathed everything through good hands to my stepsister, Jimmy. Ha! You didn't expect that, did you, Stephen? That I'd leave everything to that simpering idiot? I would spare you both in exchange for that will. You could go away, together, free. Don't believe him. Once he has obtained what he wants, he'll kill us just the same. Trust such a monster. Silence, you stupid pig. Well, do you agree? No. 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 Everything to her stepsister, to that irresponsible idiot. So it's all been for nothing. You can't kill her now. You must let her live. I have no intention of doing so. Why do you think I have helped you? Just to pamper your jealousy and your twisted instincts? You are wrong. I wouldn't wish the gallows for so little. I want my share. You promised it to me. You must be the heir, and I along with you. And that is exactly what will happen. I shall not give up my revenge. You must not forget that Muriel alive would be too great a danger for me and for you. No. No one will ever discover how my wife died. And Jenny will inherit everything. But Jenny is mad, and that is a well-known fact. What can she do with all that money? Her place is in a lunatic asylum, while I... I shall discover the secret that man has been looking for since the beginning of time. And don't be afraid. You will get your reward. A reward that will be more precious to you than all the wealth in the world. Hey, I'm here that at one, Twisted so Dreams so Film Festival, and I'm here at the Troma booth. Lloyd Kaufman's here this weekend. There's some vendors, lots of fun stuff going on. Check this out. Yeah, that's Morgan and I as little figures. Cute, right? There's a couple more. Dr. Cadaverino. Love that. Mistress Malicious. Of course, Dr. Destruction. You guys need to purchase tickets? Yes. Fantastic. Like, Here's the trauma table. They're arguing about movies, of course. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's alive! Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's alive! 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 It
Now you'll see. Now you'll feel what I felt. No! No! Be uh. far on! Leave her alone! You beast, you! Nay! Please! I can't stand it! Go away! Muriel! Muriel! You're home, Jenny. You didn't expect it to be so big. Hampton Castle is the largest in the county. I'm sure you'll feel at home here. And this is Solange. She will look after you and be useful to you in many ways. Welcome home, Miss Hampton. Miss Hampton? But she is my wife, the second Mrs. Arrowsmith. We were just married this very morning. I beg your... Yes. Certainly. 
Come in, Mrs. Arrowsmith. Oh! What's the matter, dearest? Is something wrong? No. You forgot to carry me over the threshold. They say it brings good luck. Do you believe in that? Superstitions. It's better not to be superstitious in this house. Why? It's better, you know, never to be superstitious. This way, I'll lead you. Oh. What a peculiar plant. I've never seen one like it before. So fleshy, you mean? Yes. A rare plant. Nepente iridata. It's very dear to me. Now you can see how much you look like your stepsister. It's incredible. If it weren't for the hair, you'd say we were the same person. The dressing room is just in there. Thank you. I have a slight headache. I think I feel better if I take off my hat. You owe me an explanation, Stephen. What do you mean? Why did you marry her? We never spoke about it. <gasps> what on earth is the matter, dear? Oh, what an unpleasant surprise for you. Don't worry, it's harmless. It disappeared from my laboratory a few days ago. I couldn't find it anywhere. It's come a long way. I promise you, it will never happen another time. I'll take it back to the laboratory. What do you intend to do with her? Why did you marry her? We had a different plan. Then, I thought she was a poor imbecile, ugly and repulsive. And instead, she is beautiful and reminds you of Muriel. You are still in love with that witch. As far as witches are concerned, you are no one to talk. Muriel, as you know, I hated her. And Jenny? Yes. I might even come to like her. So now we'll never get rid of Jenny again, as you promised me you would. I shall have to put up with another mistress. On the surface, Jenny seems normal, but her doctor told me that her sanity hangs by a thread, and living here could easily snap it. It would not be difficult to find a doctor willing to testify regarding her condition, and then I shall be legally responsible for the custody of her person and well-being. This seems to me the best and surely the safest way out. But anything unexpected might possibly crop up. Who will guarantee to us that her mental condition will get worse? I'll see to that. Look here. May this be the first of many happy days.
Steven. Steven. Yourself, dear. You've had a bad dream. It's nothing. It's all over now. Stephen? Where was I? That terrible place in that map? It was a nightmare. Do you hear me? No, it wasn't a nightmare. I was there. And I saw blood. And that horrible plant. But I saw it here, the blood. But I tell you, I did see it. I'm not mad. Dear little creatures, sweet, faithful, and also lustful, hidden by a mask of innocence. Did Muriel like them too? She loved other animals. Cats, a pair of tortoises. She had also tamed an owl. And her horses, of course. Did she often go riding? It was her passion. And she paid for it. Where did it happen? There is a jump behind the house. Hidden among the trees there. Do you like it? Huh? The 
belong to Muriel. I found it in her wardrobe. Isn't it strange that we both had the same size? Stephen. About last night. It wasn't just an hallucination. It was something unreal and mysterious. When I was in bed, I knew I was with you when I heard the heartbeat. I was awake and also when... I know, my dear. You told me. You know it can't have been anything else but delirium in your mind. I hope it won't happen again. We must have faith, even if... When you were in the clinic, you had hallucinations. No, this has nothing whatever to do with them. Anyway, now I'm normal. Oh, yes. Excuse me. I have prepared the slides for the analysis. We can begin whenever you like. I will come with you right now. Hey, I'm here. At a special place with Brendan yeah. from Baraboo Toy Soldier Shop and Miniatures. And you have the little horror host figures, don't you? Awesome. In fact, we even have you. Do you want to take a look? Yeah. You and your sister? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it's adorable little figures of Morgan and I. In miniature. That's awesome. And they have like little cute boxes and they come with a collectible card. And we have some other horror hosts, and we have Dr. Wolfenstein from A Thousand Corpses, and yeah, so all he sorts of... Yeah, so a lot of really cool ones. His name is Rob. He has an Etsy shop if you want to buy them, or you can get them here. Or in Baraboo, at the Baraboo Toy Soldier Shop in Miniatures. Yes. <laughs> I really need to visit your shop in Baraboo, because I keep seeing all the cool stuff you bring, and I've never been there, but I love Baraboo. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And here's one. We have Frankenstein, Before He Drowned the Girl by Accident. These are made by an artist in Spain, and we, wow. we love carrying their artwork. Yeah, or here's um, some of these. Edgar Allan Poe and the black cat there in the wall. That's really But neat. it's fun. People love miniatures. Yeah, especially because a lot of people have live in small spaces. You don't have room for big, yeah. big things, but miniatures can make a little display. It's fun. That's what we'll do next year. We'll make a display of you and your sister in a shadow box with your eight an eight by ten of you autographed that'd be so that'll cool. be good for display and we have some autographs from some celebrities and here's jeffrey combs and reanimator we got some that are framed um, these are monster signs that an artist in argentina paints we got all different oh, kinds of the cool. horror movies That's so cool so and real unique to where's your shop in Maribel? it's downtown on the square so, you know, we have a little Rockwellian type of town, and we're right there in the middle of the whole downtown. Yeah, I, I'm going to visit, and I highly recommend people go visit. Look at this cool stuff. And they play, I've heard they play horror host shows on their TV. <laughs> yes, all the time. Vortex or the Monster Channel is always on, and people love it. So. Well, thank you so much, Brandon. This is, oh, what a pleasure seeing you again. Next time we'll have to get your sister, too. Absolutely. So the medicine really worked. Another couple of doses, and your patient will be ready for the asylum. I'm afraid so. She has reacted perfectly. The rest is understandable, of course. Poor thing, with her previous illness. Have you prepared the file for tonight? I will do it now. this? This is the file you were supposed to give her last night. How is it that it's still here? You made a mistake. But it's impossible. There was only that one. Not at all. There was another one. A file of harmless saccharose. It isn't here anymore. You poured that one into the champagne instead of the hallucinogen. Fool! I, I'm sorry. 
anyway. Without wanting to, we have had ample proof that it is not necessary to force her madness with external devices. But if her nightmares were really true, brought on, I, I don't know, by some mysterious being. The spirits of the castle? I have never met any. And they don't exist until it is proven to the contrary. But how do you explain that Jenny saw that mysterious plant dripping blood and heard two hearts beating? The fruits of an over-receptive mind, exalted like Jenny's. But she called out for David in her dream. I'm frightened. Oh, be quiet. I'll get Dr. Joyce here as soon as possible to verify the mental instability of my young wife. No, not yet. What if something terrible were to happen while he is here? I don't know why you want to run risks for nothing. All right. Anyway, I'm not so certain that I'm in such a hurry to get rid of her, you know. Who wrote this music? Poor Muriel. Every once in a while, she would amuse herself by composing some music. anything but champagne. Tonight I feel I'd like something a little stronger. Jonathan, may I have some please? How do you feel? Strange, it's good. I had no idea I'd like it. Dr. Friedman's rubbish drives me out of my mind. really interested, I'll take you to see the tomb one day. Refuse to read such rubbish. I should like to invite that fool here to the castle. I would just like to get a look at his face. Where's Jenny? She was there a moment ago. Very likely she decided to go upstairs to her room. Maybe she was tired. Just like that, without saying a word. It's rather odd. Perhaps she wasn't feeling very well. I have arms in my shirt. Jenny! Jenny! Are you there? Jenny! Did you hear that? It came from down below. Quickly. It's Jenny. She must be down below in the vault.
forgive me, Stephen. I try to remember. But when everything is coming back to me, I feel as if my memory is paralyzed. Now, let's see. What is the last thing you can remember? I don't know. I was there with you in Solange. No, I was at the piano and I was playing. Then I don't remember. I suddenly found myself in that horrible place. I felt an unbearable pain in my hands and I looked down and they were covered with blood. I was trying to move the slab with my nail. I was terrified. I, I ran to the door and tried to get out. But someone had locked it from the inside and I couldn't open it. I screamed. I was so afraid of dying down there. I felt as if someone was pulling me down, down, down. I was so frightened, Stephen. You have to help me. It was nothing but your imagination. You are among friends here. You must trust us. Yes, I know, but that door, it was locked. No, Jenny, it was not locked. All I had to do was push it. You didn't open it because you didn't want to. It's a hysterical phenomenon which is very frequent in people who are in your state of mind. I, I know what you're thinking, Stephen, but I'm not mad. I'm sure of it. I was different before I came here. Perhaps we acted a little rashly in bringing you over here so soon. Maybe it was my fault. But I wanted you here with me. You won't send me back to the clinic, will you, Stephen? Tell me the truth, please. No, dear. I want you here. But I also want you to get better and to be happy. Therefore, I've decided to invite Dr. Joyce to come here. He had you under his care for a long time, and he knows your case well. And here, he will be able to look after you, observe you, and study the remedies that are best suited to you. You will continue on as if nothing had ever happened, and the doctor will be only a guest. You trust him, don't you? All right, but do stop treating me like a madwoman, Stephen, won't you, please? What foolish talk is that? Now, take this mild drug and you will have a nice sleep without any nightmares. I don't want it. I'm afraid of going to sleep. Just as you like. I will be right there in the armchair with my reading. Welcome to Hampton Castle, Dr. Joyce. Did you have a good journey? Yes, thank you. I'm very pleased to see you. And so, I'm sure, is my wife. How are you, Lady Arrowsmith? I must say you're looking extremely well. Oh, appearances can be deceptive, Doctor. However, I'm so pleased to see you again. What a lovely day. I didn't realize it. I hardly ever go out. Hampton Castle has become for me a sort of magnificent prison. Come. Let's take a stroll in the park. You know, there's a very strange wild rugged park behind the castle, which I'd like to show you. Jenny. But, dearest, the doctor has only just arrived, perhaps later on. It doesn't matter. Jenny, I would like to come. No, my husband's quite right. Napoleon, 1861. It's a wonderful brandy. Such a marvelous aroma. I thought you didn't drink. Many years ago, this castle may have liked water, but it certainly never liked alcohol. This was one of Muriel's very favorite drinks. Jenny, your husband has told me about everything that has recently happened here. You know, I am here only to help you. And uh, you must try and force yourself to remember the details of what happened to you. Something 
that will help us to understand the cause. I don't know. In those moments, it's as if another person took possession of my mind and my body, and everything becomes vague and confused without any reason. And yet, there must be a reason. When you came here, your mental condition was perfect. Therefore, the reason for your trouble must be sought in these surroundings. Jenny, do you... do you have any suspicions that your mind... No, I don't think so. I just saw blood where there wasn't any. And I heard sound where there weren't any. And there was that tune. And that... that name. David? Oh, yes, David. You said that name coming out of the nightmare. And that name could perhaps help you to remember your dream. Are you really convinced? Why are you so interested in me? Or maybe you're like Stephen, you're convinced I'm insane. If what you're suggesting were so, I would not be here. And I'm going to help you, whether you like it or not. There is nothing to discover. You won't discover anything, Doctor. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Doctor. And that things are already improving. Later, if you'd like to come down to my laboratory, I shall be pleased to show you some experiments I've made on the electrolytic treatment of the blood. <laughs> Why are you laughing, dear? You and your experiments. Jenny, do you hear me? What's the matter with you? I... I'm sorry, Stephen. I was confused. It's not important. It doesn't matter. Doctor, if I can help you, don't hesitate to ask me. Even though I assure you, I have already told you as much as I know. Thank you. I'll come to see your laboratory later. Lovely, delicate flowers. Not at all like those horrible, revolting flowers in the greenhouse. In the greenhouse? Do you often go in there? Yes, I've been there. I was there the night. I... Come with me. Let's go. Tell me now. You must remember. You dreamt you were here, didn't you? I don't know. I don't remember. Don't torment me, please. Let me leave this place. Well, if you don't want me to help you. However, I warn you. You will end up a prisoner of your madness and obsessions forever. I don't know. I can't remember. I think I was standing there where you are now. David was embracing. Suddenly he was hit on the face. My earring fell off, down in those leaves. I'm sure we will find it. What's that? That's it. I lost it while he was kissing me. Who was kissing you? I don't remember. It was dark. And then somebody came in while we were... I'm sorry, it's all so vague. Did you see me?
time I've ever seen it. The earring doesn't belong to me. It's very strange. So I'm still at Twisted Dreams, and I ran into Joe Michael. <laughs> Wait, that's not really your name, is it? It's no. It's just your name for the weekend. It's just my name for the weekend. My name is Michael Myers, though. Not to be confused with Michael Myers. Okay, so I hear you have a show, and I need to hear about it. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I host a podcast called The Shameless Picture Show. Shame List Picture Show. So not shameless, shameless. No, no, it's it's... I, looking back on, I probably should have chose a more streamlined name. Just, but you know. I like it. Shameless. Yeah, because the whole conceit of it was um, when me and my co-host got together, we knew we wanted to do a show, and we realized, you know, as as film people, there's often a lot of times there's movies you haven't seen. You know. Oh yeah. Uh, but most people don't like to admit what they haven't seen. You know, instead of being like, oh, people are like, have you seen Apocalypse Now? And instead of being like, no, I've not seen you, you're just like, yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, that's a good movie, yeah. And we thought, it's like, why are we feeling such shame for things we haven't seen? There's only so much time in the day. Let's just admit to it and give ourselves an open place to talk about things. I like that. And it's not just, you know, big prestigious films. Like, we have done big things like Rocky, which my co-host hasn't seen, Apocalypse Now, The Godfather. But then we'll do dumb stuff like Yor, The Hunter from the Future, and The Phantom Tollbooth. I've not seen those. <laughs> well, I've seen some. Of, I've seen The Godfather and Apocalypse Now and Rocky. <laughs> and, and a lot of people have said that the show is, even if you haven't seen the movie, the show is still accessible. So okay. that, I'm proud of that. So if people want to watch your show, how do they do that? So um, it's it's an audio podcast. We do have some stuff on, on YouTube and uh on public access in Maryland, but you can find us on pretty much every podcast app of choice from Apple, Spotify, uh, Amazon, Audible, all of that. But then you can also find us at www.cinepunks.com. C-I-N-E-P-U-N-X.com. They host our, our show and a lot of other great stuff too. That's awesome. So it sounds like something I have to check out because I enjoy talking about movies and listening to people talk about movies. How long have you been doing this for? Six years. Wow, that's a long run. Yeah, we I started. We recorded our first couple episodes right before I got married, and released them right after the honeymoon. And you haven't run out of stuff to show yet. Not yet, no. <laughs> All right. Well, I have to ask, what's your favorite horror movie? Probably John Carpenter's Halloween. It's the movie that inspired me to want to make classic. movies. Classic. Yeah. Very classic. Uh, close second would probably be Bride of Frankenstein. Oh wait, you're a filmmaker too, aren't you? Yes. Okay, please tell me about that. Oh, what do you want to know? Everything. Okay. What have you made? Uh, so I've made a couple, mostly short films. Um, the one that kind of got me the most notoriety was a, a film called From the Darkness Theater. I did it um, right out of film school. Uh, it was kind of was my senior thesis film, and that got me quite a bit of attention for. And, uh, and then I did another film after that called Love You Still. It's a, a drama that was funded by Milwaukee Film. Um, I've done some music videos, other short films, and then I just wrapped a new film called No Soliciting. Yeah. It's written by Dick Gernert and myself. Dick Gernert uh, is a writer for Cartoon Network, and he used to write for Adventure Time. I, I love Adventure Time. And uh, that, that's an, it's an exciting one. Uh, and I'm really excited for that one. We're right now in the editing process. It'll take a little bit of time, but you know, I'm quite excited for it. I can't wait to see it. it. All right, so where can people watch your movies then? They are all on YouTube. You can search for my name, Michael Viers. That's V as in Victor, I-E-R-S. All right, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Of course, thank you. Be careful. It was possible for me to give you back your youth, but I could do nothing about your mind. It doesn't matter, Doctor. It's not my mind which is useful to you when you need it. I hope I'm not disturbing you. I thought you had forgotten my invitation. Oh. Come along. I want to show you a unique experiment which could have sensational developments. Oh, very interesting, but uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to speak to you about your wife's illness. I'm sure that Jenny's hallucinations come partly from her sick mind, and I'm sure that they must also have a cause and foundation in the reality that surrounds her. No one could wish it were so, more than I do. But unfortunately, various symptoms seem to point to the contrary. Hmm. I thought so too, at first. But look. An earring. Yes. And so? It was in the greenhouse, under the leaves. Exactly where Jenny dreamt she was. But it doesn't belong to her, so it belongs to another woman. Muriel, for example, with whom Jenny identifies herself in the dream. 
This earring proves that there is something real behind Jenny's nightmares. And if we can discover what it is, we will solve the mystery. Her ladyship has acquired the habit of hiding things about the house. And then forgetting later where she has put them. I told you about this. Oh, yes. It's true. A form of kleptomania. And so, what of the other earring? I don't think it should be difficult to find it. I'm sure it must be among her other jewels, naturally. If you'll allow me, I'll go and have a look. This would explain your strange discovery. Go along, Solange, and then rejoin us in the living room. Oh, I had almost forgotten. Lady Arrowsmith has changed her room. I don't think you knew about it. In the meantime, let me show you now the experiment I was speaking to you about. Excuse me, madame. Dr. Stephen would like to show Dr. Joyce some of your jewelry. If you would like to go down yourself, they will be very pleased. Oh, I'll come down with you then. Please, may I take your jewel box? Why, yes, of course. Solange! Solange, do you think I should go down like this? Or would it be too indecent? You are in your home, madame. And Dr. Joyce is a friend. The earring is one of those in the portrait. So there's no doubt about it. It's true, then, that they belong to Muriel. Undoubtedly. You see, my dear Derek, at first I was rather embarrassed to admit that my wife sometimes hides certain things. You know, without any reason and without remembering it. Solange says that you'd like to see my jewelry. I'm afraid they're not collection pieces, but I'll gladly show them to you. I should like to see them. You're very kind, you know. Here's an emerald and diamond necklace that I like very much. Oh, and here's a gold bracelet that belonged to my mother. This one is from Sansa Steve. Beautiful. And this is an earring that... have never worn them. How do you explain these things? I don't know. I don't know how to explain them. What do you think of the fact that man has learned to exploit his brain on a supersensory level? Consider the numerous cases of telepathy, of clairvoyance, and even of diagnosis from a distance. There is no doubt that the uh, witches and wizards of Africa and Siberia do no more than make use of their brains, in a way, I should say, that is more intelligent than ours. We know that they are able to enter directly into contact with the beyond, and even with the dead. Well, let us not exaggerate. Telepathy is one thing. The beyond is quite another. I must ask you to excuse me. I think I'll go upstairs. I feel a little tired. What is it, Jenny? Is something wrong? No, no, nothing. I just, just feel a little tired. And don't trouble yourself, Stephen. Good night. I'll join you immediately. Good night. Good night, Jenny. Good night, madame. Poor Jenny. She becomes stranger all the time. Do you really think it was wise of you to decide to let her sleep alone? As things are at the moment, it certainly can't do her any harm. One must proceed blindly, by trial and error. Her memory is blocked just now. Yes. I realize that her condition doesn't leave us much hope. And I know that you are doing everything humanly possible to help her. Oh, Stephen! Doctor! 
You should be more careful. Let's go down to the laboratory. We must... We must stop the bleeding at once. Is there anything I can do to help you? No, no, thank you. It's nothing. She has a blood disease. Nothing serious. But we must stop the hemorrhage immediately. Otherwise, it could be dangerous. Come along, Solange. Would you like me to serve you anything else, sir? A glass of port, some whiskey? No, no, thank you, Jonathan. I'm going up to my room. Good night to you, Jonathan. Good night. It's no good. We need new blood. It's been successful again this time. But the solution can't last much longer. laboratory. Annabelle Hampton died in her 27th year. Muriel Hampton, 26 years old.
Your pulse is regular. She must have been completely out of control. You tend to your wound, and I'll look after her. Stephen, I saw her. She was about to strike you. That face, it wasn't hers. It was Muriel's. <laughs> you, Jenny. Jenny? Jenny? I'm not Jenny. I hate Jenny. I hate her. I'm Muriel. <laughs> Jenny. Yes. Did you? Yes, I don't know what it was, but I shall certainly find out. Stephen. With blood all over his face. But it wasn't me. Please forgive me. she wants from me. Why does she torment me so? Jenny, I saw it too. It's true. A strange and terrifying phenomenon. But you can be sure that nothing will change my decision. I'm going to help you, Jenny. When you speak to me, I begin to have some faith again and a little bit of hope. Promise not to leave me, Derek. I'm so afraid. I think it would be better for you if you were to leave the castle. Just for a short while, some place that's calm and quiet. Very well. Just as you say. Now you see what happens when you don't listen to me. Now it's not only that woman we have to worry about, but the doctor as well. That interfering busybody who always keeps spying on us while never losing the opportunity of consoling the poor little dove. You seem to enjoy it. If it should ever cross your mind that I could be jealous of Derek, you'd be greatly mistaken. But his being here makes things so dangerous. Why did he go down into the crypt last night? Maybe he found out something. He found out enough to hang us both. He moved the slab on Muriel's tomb and discovered it was empty. So then we are ruined. He could turn us over at any moment now. You must stop him from leaving the castle at all costs. We must... Keep quiet. I know what we must do. You were looking for me, Doctor? Why, yes, I was. I wanted to have a few words with you before you went to the laboratory. Nothing would please me more. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I wanted to speak to you about your wife. I'm convinced that it is absolutely necessary for her to leave the castle, for surroundings more suited to the cure of her mental troubles. What is the matter? You may speak quite freely. I want to tell you there are ghosts in this castle, Dr. Arrowsmith. Oh. Tell me. Have you seen them yourself, by any chance? Souls living in another world, trying to hide themselves behind Jenny, trying to possess her, to destroy her mind and free will.
Your wife is not mad. But she runs the risk of becoming so if she continues to live here in this castle. I quite realize that. It was I who asked you to come here, and I shall abide by any decision you feel it necessary to make. I have already mentioned it to Jenny, and I'm sure she will agree. All the better. Will you be taking her back to the same clinic where she was treated before? Definitely yes, to begin with. I plan to take her away with me tomorrow. Well, I leave you to your work. Thank you, Doctor. So I caught up here with Richard Bergen, who is a filmmaker, and I'm really excited to talk to him about his upcoming movie, Fang, and some new projects he's working on. So, Richard. Please tell us about Fang. Well, Fang is the movie that I wrote, directed, executive produced, casted, and I have a small acting role in it, but I'll, I'll just stick with, I'm the director of Fang to save time. So, Fang is a movie about a young man named Billy Cochran. He is a janitor. He lives with his mother, Gina, on the south side of Chicago. And Billy is autistic, so he is very, like, he's not really, he's not a very popular guy. He doesn't go to a lot of parties. Billy spends a lot of time alone, either when he's at work or at home. And so one night, Billy wakes up at, in his bedroom. He has to use the bathroom. So he gets to the bathroom at home. He pulls open the shower curtain, and there's a rat in the bathtub, and so the rat jumps out at Billy and chases him around the house and then it bites him. And so from that point forward, Billy starts transforming into a rat. He sees this rat fur on his skin. It's, and I can't say too much more about the plot without giving too much away, but Fang is the story of a man who's turning into a rat. Yeah, I remember when we talked about this, I told you it, it reminded me of a combination between The Fly and Hoarders. Oh, that's a great way to put it. I mean, yeah, I mean, The Fly is like a tragic horror masterpiece, and Hoarders does kind of describe some of the characters in Fang. Yeah, so we're really excited to see it. So oh, thank you. It's not quite out yet, but when it is, where will people be able to find it? Fang will be premiering on November 29th, 2022 at the Davis Theater in Chicago. All right, and then after that, are, do you have future plans for its release? Well, it's going to be going to streaming and DVD and Blu-ray at the very least. I would love to get Fang released in more theaters, but I know that, like now, not that many movies get to play in theaters, so... But, you know, I, I'm, I gamble sometimes, so... I believe that, you know, we may win the lottery on this one and get a bigger theatrical release. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. So, now that you've finished Fang, do you have any upcoming projects? I do. There's, there's one script I'm working on now that is based on someone else's book who I'm friends with, so I can't say too much about that yet because I don't have the rights to it. And then the other script I'm working on that I want to film soon is called Broken Angels. It's a crime story the the premise it's about a guy who's campaigning to be elected senator of florida he's like this very charismatic smooth talking politician like he seems very normal but he has a double life as like this psychopathic perverted predator and so like the other characters are kind of discovering more and more of this guy's secrets and it's like and it's a mystery and it's very suspenseful and satirical and so that's going to be my next movie after fang probably sounds great oh thank you so what got you into filmmaking well it's it's one of those things where like as a teenager i was very antisocial, so i stayed at home and watched a lot of movies that i thought you know there's nothing cooler than this you know if you're a director, then you're like God, basically. And then when I got older, I realized I am not God. I am very mortal, but I'm going to keep doing this anyway because I can't do anything else. You know, being a director is like, 
you know, if you have other options, then by all means do those options because this is very difficult, but it's as rewarding as it is difficult. And I hope, you know, to keep making movies for as long as I can. It's the most wonderful and most challenging thing in the world. And um, I don't have plans, you know, to change careers anytime soon. Awesome. So besides your movies, what are your favorite horror movies? Well, The Shining was the first adult horror movie that I saw. I saw that, I think, like, like either late middle school or early high school years. And that was like, you know, that kind of flipped a switch in my brain. And I was like, yeah, I like this. That was Psycho and Sense. And I saw Psycho when I was young, too. Yeah. That was also very, Psycho very influential. Definitely had that yeah, impact exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Oh, for thank you. Today. Yeah. Are you sure it will work? Wouldn't poison have been a safer way? There isn't a poison which leaves no traces. In this way, we don't run any risks and the result is the same. Come in. Did you call, sir? Yes, Jonathan. I think it's about time for my evening bath. It will be ready in just a moment, sir. Thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan? All ready, sir. Will you be needing anything else, sir? No. I forgot about the clean towel. Oh, that's all right.
Jonathan. Jonathan, what happened? Jonathan. What happened, Jonathan? There's no doubt he had a heart attack. Probably he suffered from a weak heart without knowing it. Quite possibly. Also, the overheated atmosphere of the room could easily have had some influence. Please, Jenny, go back to your room. Solange, go with her ladyship. This one is certainly a case that makes one think very seriously about the frailty of human life. Only ten minutes ago, that man was the picture of health. And now he is ready for the worm. Please allow me not to appreciate your cynicism, Dr. Arasmith. Forgive me, my dear Derek. The fact is, you have remained too much a man to be a scientist. Oh, and before I forget, will you think about making out a death certificate for the authorities? Right Something else, if you don't mind. Will you help me to carry poor Jonathan's body into his room? Is there anything else I can get you, madame? No. All I want to do is leave this house before it's too late. There. Forgive me, Doctor. I'm afraid I've asked you to perform a rather unpleasant task. Uh, we can go now. It will probably seem very silly to you, but I would like to leave a little light for him. Go ahead. I'll see you later. And now what shall we do? Your wife says she wants to go away at once. On the contrary, she won't go anywhere. Of that, I can assure you, everything will turn out exactly as we want it. Go along now, it's he. You look a little distraught, Jenny. I realize that what happened to Jonathan was a painful shock to you, but you mustn't be disheartened. Stephen, I can't stand it. I don't want to stay here anymore. I'm leaving tomorrow with Derek for wherever he chooses to take me. Anything will be better than this hell. With Derek? I thought so. He's bewitched you with his stories. What are you saying? Why are you talking like that? You had so much faith in him, now? Now? I see that his so-called treating you was just an excuse to flirt shamelessly with you. And don't say you didn't realize it yourself. But I swear to you, I've known Derek for years. He's such a good friend of mine. He's so affectionate and unselfish. You may be blind, my dear, but I'm not. I know his type. Affectionate, unselfish, and always ready to take advantage of a beautiful patient. Weak and rich. No, don't you dare say that. Derek hasn't done anything wrong. Are uh, caresses? Holding hands and soft looks, all part of the cure. You forget that greenhouses are made of glass, and I am not blind. I love you, Jenny. I, I don't want to lose you. I can't stand the idea of your going away with him. Don't leave me alone, Jenny. I don't want to, Stephen. But I'm so frightened here. 
We'll go away together. Tomorrow. We'll go to Spain, to Italy, wherever you want. You'll leave all your nightmares behind you. And we won't come back here until you have completely recovered. All right? Then we leave tomorrow. Just as you say, Stephen. Certainly, this journey can do you nothing but good. You'll be able to amuse yourself, to breathe pure air, to find real tranquility. But I cannot pretend that I shouldn't have preferred another solution. Do you mean the asylum, Dr. Derrick? Or have you other plans? But Jenny, why are you saying these things? It seems as if you had suddenly lost all faith in me. Perhaps you see me as some clinical case to be kept under observation and studied. It will be bad enough if that's true, yet in a way I wish it was so. Because if what happened last night has put any ideas in your head, I'll be obliged to consider you simply one of the most contemptible of men. I realize that after what you have said, there's nothing I can answer. Whatever I might say would only confirm your suspicions. Now the only thing left for me to do is to go away. But before I go, I want to tell you this, Jenny. I have always been very fond of you. And any time you need me, I shall be happy to help you. so cold tonight. That damn blood. It's turning to poison in my veins. Cold, heavy, like mercury. She wants it back. Muriel, that witch, she wants her blood. Stephen, do something. Save me. I need new life. Young, pure blood. I need Jenny's blood. Very well, then. You'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> Who are you? Muriel? 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 
Where is your body? My heart. Oh, take my heart. Oh, take, take my heart. My heart. Oh, no. oh. Who killed you, Stephen? here at Twisted Dreams Film Festival in Milwaukee and I managed to track down the creator of Burlesque Show that performed here and we're going to talk to Katie Cadaver. Hi Katie. Hi. So you performed here last night. I did. We did a trauma inspired a burlesque performance before the screening of hashtag Shakespeare Storm and uh, my group Grindhouse Tees came out and did a wonderful job. Uh, we really got the crowd primed for a trauma film so it was a lot of fun. Okay. Um, if it was trauma themed what was your act based on? My act specifically was based on the song the Pussifer song Country Boner. Um, I won't give anything away um, but there was a little surprise at the end. Grindhouse Tees is your creation, is it not? It is. That's correct. Uh, founded in 2018, um, just a group of burlesque performers looking for a unique space to create burlesque that um, kind of pushes the boundaries of what people typically see. Burlesque as an art form in itself is pushing boundaries, but we're doing it in a way that just aligns a little bit more with the kind of things you would see here at Twisted Dreams or at Troma. Uh, you know, we we get weird, we get wild, we get schlocky, we get spooky. That's awesome. You are also a pretty talented makeup artist. Well, thank you so much. I have seen many of your art and 
cosplay, and it's very inspiring, very cool. And I think that you're pretty well known around the horror convention circuit because of that. Yes, I do have a small group of fans that uh, appreciate the work that I do at the horror conventions, and I really do enjoy cosplaying and makeup art, and um, I've been doing it for quite a few years now. It's one of my passions. So if people want to check out your artwork or your burlesque, how do they do that? Well, you can find me, Katie Cadaver. That's Cadaver with a K. And I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Patreon. And you can find Grindhouse Tees. We have a Facebook page. But as long as you can find me, Katie Cadaver, I can uh, get you hooked up with Grindhouse Tees and anything else that I'm doing. Yeah, I know. I encourage everyone to reach out to Katie. Tell her how amazing her artwork is. She doesn't play hard. Nah, unless you like it. All right. And what's your favorite horror movie? My favorite horror movie is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I am right there with you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Well, have a good journey, and thank you again for everything you've done for my wife. Oh, there is nothing to thank me for. And uh, would you please say goodbye to her for me? Goodbye, Derek. I'm grateful to you for trying to help me. Oh, I'm delighted to be able to wish you a pleasant trip once more. And I hope to see you again very soon. Why are you going? Don't you find enough to interest you here? Do you like the Hampton Crest? Goodbye and good luck. When? Now, Stephen, I beg you. We must be far from here before he is able to speak to anybody. I am preparing the electrolysis. You know that it's only a matter of a few hours. Everything will be ready for you by this evening. And then we leave during the night, all three of us. At least officially. I'm going down to the laboratory. Listen, Stephen, I wonder if... Come along. There's no time to lose. I'm going to free you from your nightmares forever, Jenny. Your sister is calling you, isn't she? Can't you hear her? Now that damned voice will be silenced forever! Miserable Hampton witch, your race is finished! Stephen, I can't stand it! You will sleep now. A long sleep. That will be without any oh more God. dreams. What have I Peace, done? Jenny. Come along now, lie down.
It will still take a couple of hours. I'm going up to prepare everything for the journey. You stay still. Yes, Stephen. It's my flesh you're touching. The flesh you thought you'd destroyed. But you can't destroy flesh any more than you can love or hate. It's all the same thing. What do you want? I punished you for your crime. No. You gave me extreme pleasure. You taught me the pleasure of the torment of the flesh, which turns into ecstasy. Yes, Stephen, that passes through life into death and receives eternity. Now I'm going to reward you with that same pleasure. Come, darling. Stephen? Stephen? Be afraid, Stephen. I'll stay with you with my body and my senses until someone comes and destroys my heart. Monstrous soul, if there is any such thing in your damn being. 
It's my moment now. <laughs> Help! Help! Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, Jenny. Now all of your nightmares are over and done with forever. 